that mark the 32nd <laughs> not april 1st i am latrice um your host of insights with latrice and i am so happy to be here with you i thought that it was important it was necessary um to start talking to you and and chatting with you about what's going on like everyone else here's the great thing about today i have an amazing guest who i had the privilege of actually um, co-hosting with um, on our local show here in Kansas City, Missouri. She, so let me just tell you about her. She's a model, producer, host, um, and she is actually now in the process of getting her degree as a therapist. So she's well-rounded, well-rounded, and she is just amazing to me. Our relationship has grown, evolved, into something that is just a beautiful flower i think if i could say that and so so um without further ado crystal lampit let me make sure i got you in here crystal yes i think i think we got it i think we got it and here's the thing we have foxy Right. And so let me just go ahead and talk to you about Foxy. Okay. Foxy, it's clear that she doesn't have to follow the rules of the law. And so she has no social distancing, personality, whatever. She is definitely an extrovert. She needs love, hugs, but I feel her. I, I totally feel Foxy. So welcome, Crystal. Thank you for taking the time so we can talk on Insights with Latrice and really just talk to the people and help the people with what's going on with this crisis that we've never seen before. We never, um, we don't know what this is, right? And anything that's uncertain is scary, right? It allows fear to, to kind of be seen. And so you really have to guard your peace. You have to guard um, everything. You have to do new normals, all those things. So I want to ask you first. Yeah. Just, I know you and I know you're on. How has this affected you emotionally, mentally? Talk to me about it. Yeah. And then that's, and that is such a, <laughs> such a loaded question. Um, you know, for, for me, it's been such an interesting year anyway um where um, after our morning show was canceled i decided not to stay in at the station in television any longer i still do some of that things but um my life was kind of already i guess slowing down so to speak i was home a lot more i still a full-time student um i still am getting my master's in social work for kind of therapist so uh, that hasn't changed at all um right but I was kind of in this weird place of, okay, like, what next? I was already kind of having this um, identity crisis, if you will, when figuring out what are the next steps. And I felt actually very alone. And when this coronavirus hit and all of these new measures were put in place and the stay-at-home order was put in place, it was kind of strange because it was like now everybody was in a crisis. Yeah. And while I never wanted that, I would never want that to happen. Um, it it has offered an interesting sense of belonging and community, and I'm noticing other people speak to this as well. I'm still seeing some therapy clients, and I've noticed some of them are, I wouldn't say they're loving it, but they, they do feel very supported by the fact that everybody is having this very similar unifying experience. Um, and some people are struggling like yeah. crazy. And, and for me, a lot of what's come up has been, what's my routine? What can I control? Um, and then personally, also my, my dad, we are basically being told to treat it as if he has COVID-19. So okay. we, I have oh, so Yeah, so we, we haven't even been able to be around him at all um, for okay. weeks now. Um, and I think that's the hardest part of all this is the social isolation. And even being an introvert and at first kind of loving being able to be at home more, you know, there was that part of me that was just like, this sucks to not be able to go grab a cup of coffee with my yeah. or to go see you and hang out with you yeah. or throw a group gathering. Um, I have a trauma training coming up starting tomorrow, actually, 
Um, okay. That was supposed to be in Austin. And of course, all of that got um, canceled and we're now doing it remotely. Um, so Perfect. things have adjusted. I think the hardest thing for me has been not being able to just get up and go somewhere, hang out with a friend, um, check in on people. You know, when I go see my dad, I mean, I can't see him, but if I stop by, um, we can kind of do like a drive by. And, uh, right. and you kind of wave. And just Away, yeah. we'll see him in the garage, you know. So, my parents are quarantined together. Um, I'm here with Foxy, and that's just been what it is. So, I think like everyone, I'm trying to stay connected through Zoom and doing these Instagram lives, and I'm doing my best. But it's not the same as being out with people, and I think that social isolation is, is huge. And I think whether you're extrovert, introvert, it's yeah. affecting everyone, you know, um, completely. So with that, and you kind of touched on it, tell me, what have you learned about yourself through this crisis? What is one thing that you're like, wow, okay, Crystal? Yeah, that's a good question. Wow, these are not like the easy Kansas City Live questions. These aren't like... Tell me about your product. Tell me why you want me to buy this. This is the like, Latrice question. Deep, intense. Search your soul. Give me the answers. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think um, maybe the best, I don't want to think the best, but one thing that has come out of this that I have really appreciated is noticing how um, adaptable we all are as humans. Um, and myself included, you know, being somebody who likes to have a plan and I'm always prepared and I, that's just how, that's how you balance school, work, an internship, a personal life, family, you know, you have all those kids, you got the husband, you've got your fingers in a lot of different yeah. pies, you know what it's like to try to manage all these things. So you have, I mean, I'll show you right here, my this is actually really funny. If you want to see my mental health, the state of my mental health, so this was my planner at the beginning. I mean, it's busy. Really, don't get me wrong. It's packed. Yeah. This was like yeah, the beginning of the year. This is what it looks like now. It's just like scribble, wow. scribble, scribble, sideways. <laughs> so it really has helped you kind of be okay if it's not exactly like it needs to be. You, yeah. you you become more flexible yes. and adjustable during this crisis. It sounds like yeah the the example and I just got a message saying that there is a bit of an echo. So either headphones might help or I actually turned down I turned down my computer. Oh, am I correct? Maybe I turned down my computer audio completely so that um I'm only listening to you through my phone. I don't know if that helps. I also have headphones. Okay. You might try that too. Well, I turned mine down. So oh, you did? Let's, okay. see if that works. let's see if that works. Thanks, Sarah. My friend Sarah. You know Sarah. Sarah Sarah T. Hacker. I know. Hey, <laughs> Sarah. Hey. Sarah knows. Yes. Sarah knows what to tell us. The tech Sarah, you so she's got our back. I was gonna say she used to get me dressed. I appreciate <laughs> oh, yeah. us shoving shoving our hands oh, down. So her. Your oh picture. no, this is another Sarah. Wait a minute, this is a loud echo. Okay, hold on. So I guess it's coming from me. Oh, okay. Living my Dex life says sound is good on my side. Okay, so he and he or she. Sorry, I can't see. Uh oh, hold on. Uh -oh, hold on. Okay, now I see Sarah Sacker. Okay, that's. That's what I thought it was, but I see the other Sarah. It's okay. Am I still echoing? Can someone give me a thumbs up or anything that tells me? Because I think it's me and my computer. Carter, thanks for joining. Loop and loops. I'm just reading out names now and and testing out this echo. So, thanks, Sarah okay. from the station five one seven. Chef Nico. Okay, thanks so, for um. Living my dress life says no echo here. So I want, um, but that's a new one. Let's see. So Sarah Thacker says there's an echo still. Okay. So maybe I need headsets. I can I can do my headphones too if that helps. 
Crystal, it's fine when you speak, but not okay when Latrice speaks. So you're good, Crystal. Um, I'm good. You're good. It's me. It's you. It's, it's not me. It's always you. me. But here's the problem with the computer I have. I don't think I have headphones. You know what? Because I get my some humans that I see. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Turn the volume and one of them. Be gone. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did, and it, it seems okay. So, <laughs> so first it is Yay! Thanks okay. for having us, guys. Thank so, you, Sarah. Always tell my back. Only for a moment. Oh, Never yeah. mind. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's um, this is perfect because when you're asking what have I learned, a I've learned how to use Zoom and a lot of different technologies in the last week, <laughs> and right. learning All to just adapt to everything. And um, taking clients via telehealth, that has been a change. Um, and um, just trying not to lose my mind. I, I am encouraged yeah. by how resilient people are. And I think, and, and myself included, this has been a strange time. And, and my my inner critic is definitely there. But yeah. Know, all encompassing, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes this last week as I've shifted all my clients over to telehealth. And um, okay. normally that part of me would be like, Crystal, what are you doing? You're horrible. You suck at this. Um, and I've been doing my best and, and somewhat succeeding and just being a lot more compassionate. Yeah, but, you know, so we're, all in this yeah. we're all a little wonky. All of our routines and schedules and everything. Did I freeze? Okay, you're good now. Can you hear me now? Oh, you're in my deck slide. Okay. Is there any recipes you have tried? I have. Let me tell you. I have. Because I am a snacker. I do not want to go in there. I do not want to go in there. I have my own recipes. 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 Actually, I actually, some pizza. Flowers is actually that. Um, oh, got, yeah, I know her. Yeah, yeah so she got me hooked on that. And so it's this Sarah Sacker, tell me, am I okay? Or because they're my um, team, my humans are um, fixing me up. So hopefully this is um, working. Okay, so now they move me. So, so. Here's the thing, we're being flexible right now and we're not stressing. Normally, <laughs> in the morning, we would be freaking out. Oh, if this was the morning show, if we were live on TV right now, Carly would be in my ear, our producer, like, oh, ah, ah, we're going to break, we're going to break, and freaking out completely. Okay, but give me a second. Give me a second because we're having Pupper. Okay, I hear you now. I write comments as you leave them. That sounds like whistling. Yeah. Yeah. I think um I think they're trying to locate me some headphones. And um, but you know what? Let's move on. We're good. We're flexible. We're working through this. It's okay because we're still gonna get the message out. We're still going to give the information to the people. So here's another question I have. Um, what is something during this time, because we're in what, the 655th day of this quarantine, what is something that you will not take for granted ever again? Question. I, I put that on, on my Instagram feed the other day, too. Um, I feel like now every um, handshake, hug, um, the ability to go to a coffee shop, um, all of that is just so much more important to me now. What is you know what, Crystal, hold on for just a moment because I'm hearing a whistle. Oh, yeah. My I'm like, where is this? So I'm getting a lot of feedback. It's gone now, but uh, I'm also doing it. Second. He who wants a rose must respect the thorn. There is my message from 
my tea today and Foxy. Okay, what does it say? It says, he who wants a rose must respect the thorn. Oh, wow. So it, it's to get to something, it's a character, a builder type of thing. You can't, can't, yeah. you can't grow without sometimes some pain, some, some oomph. And, and so I think for me, the fact that um, not taking for granted just those moments, you know, they're not, they don't, you know, you always think they're too busy. And what I have to think about, you know, my busy wasn't always necessary. Oh, sure. And so I'm wondering, what's the difference between being busy and being impactful? Because busy, like because busy, you know, I, everyone can just be busy just doing things that don't, that are mindless, that don't mean anything, but that mm -hmm. impactfulness. And so I'm learning how to really tap into that I thought I was tapping into it, but it is more, um, being more, more to learn. Yeah. yeah. So, well, and yeah. don't you think too that that sometimes I think some of the most efficient people are it's like they're doing 20%, they're doing the the 20% most important things and then getting 80% of the result done based on those that 20%. Absolutely. And delegating other pieces, managing time in other ways. I think that has been I'm sure that's in a book. I feel like that's in the one of those you know, the seven habits of the most effective people or something. Um, it's just that 80-20 that rule. Do 20%, do the most important 20% to get 80% of your results and then and be okay with that because otherwise you're also um, burning yourself out, doing way more work than you need to. But that's hard and that doesn't sit well with me because I'm such a doer and yeah. I'm like 80%, like I'm only going to get 80% result. No, I need 100 I need 110 and yeah. I will burn myself out to to reach that 110 yeah. percent all the time and that's just a lot of pressure um, a lot of pressure period but especially during a time of a pandemic yeah. um, having those expectations and I've seen that a lot too have you kind of heard this from um, people that you've interacted with where, where I'm hearing people say, I thought I was going to be so productive and I was going to get all of this done and I'm never going to have free time like this again. Um, and they're so hard on themselves for not getting stuff done. Yeah, I have. And I'm glad I'm not going through that because, oh, Sarah mm -hmm. said Echo is fixed. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Yay. You thought as well, Sarah. <laughs> but um, what I have learned um, is that you know, people are like, you know, kind of disappointed. But here's the thing. Take one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Write you some goals, right? What you want to do for that day and achieve it. If you don't, okay, don't yeah. beat yourself up. Just go to the next yeah. day, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is a time to really, I think, just do some investment in yourself. Um, some yeah. um, evalu evaluation yeah. on you, your life, your purpose, what you're doing, what's working, what's not, what's not working. It's, it's Sorry. <laughs> kind of crash. What's not working is my my headphones on my phone and balancing act. There we go. <laughs> I got it. No, I like what you're saying though. With with um. So I was listening. Who was I listening to recently? I think this is also, it's just kind of, oh, oh no. Oh, that was so bad. I took the case off my phone too. So that was a rough one. Okay. I got this, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Um, okay, let me. Oh. Do you need not to come back on? Okay, can you hear me now? Here we go. Okay, okay, I see you. Help help me out, little girl. Um, 
I was I was listening to someone and they were kind of saying just how, you know, a lot of what you can do right now is just kind of lean into what you would normally want to do anyway. Yeah. Um, it's and creative. It's exactly. Time, yeah. Tap into that creative gene. It's time to just do things that you always said you wanted to do, but you don't have time to do it. Now right. is the time. Now is the time to just take fear away and just do it. Just figure it out, you know? And I think, hey, Deanne, um, I, I just think that's so important. And and in this time of of uncertainty every day something's happening now they've um actually extended the order of not you know um being able to just go freely and i'm okay with that mm. why do you think and this is just your opinion this is nothing that you know we can base it on scientifically but just from a mental health standpoint why do you think people are fighting this in terms of, you know, I know several people who now have the virus just because they didn't want to stay home. So yeah. they they just went ahead, they, you know, are with groups. So tell me, why do you think people ignore the warning, ignore what the doctors are saying? What is that? You know, I, I've, I've noticed that too. Um, I, I recently actually went, um, was running an errand and ran into someone that I knew and, um, and it was just so hard to not give each other a hug, but also be, so I think some of it is, some of it I think is just sheer, I, I hate to say this, but ignorance. I think some people okay. believe they're impervious. Um, okay. so even though we now know, I think it's something like one in four of the people who, um, get the virus don't even show any symptoms and a lot of them are between the ages of like 22 and 44 or 20 and 40. Um, okay. so a lot of us even feeling young being young we we tend to be more impervious but and even from a just from looking at this through a trauma lens so much of trauma is your choice being taken away and so we don't like that in general we don't want our choices to be taken away period um okay. because essentially that's a lot of what trauma is is you were put in a situation that you did not want to be in and you had no choices around it. Okay. Um, so it kind of makes sense from that standpoint, especially if you have any form of trauma, which I would argue most of us do have a little bit or some, sure. some trauma from our okay. early development. Um, so it can trigger that and it can trigger that. No, I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to be told I can't leave the house and I can't do this and I can't do that. I'm going to go do it anyway. Um, and we do, we kind of get into our, our, I guess, ignorance is bliss, so to speak, and think, ah, I'll be fine. And yeah. if I get it, I'm young. I won't, you know, I'm not going to have symptoms. I'll recover. It'll be like the flu. Yeah. Um, and so really uh, trying to engage more of the empathy and the collective mentality has been the challenge, I think, with a lot of this um, is so maybe you'll be fine, but your grandmother won't or right. another person's grandmother. Um, and it's it's hard, you know. We live in a culture that teaches us to really think of ourselves first, um, yeah. and it's me, 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 me. And and you know, I love social media. We're using it right now for such a great thing. Um, yeah. But so much of our culture is narcissistic, and it is, you know, what can I do for myself? And so there is such a shift in thinking for so many people right now to think in terms of how can I help my neighbor. And I see, I'm seeing a lot of this. I think Kansas City has a lot to be proud of in this regard because, I mean, I was just talking to my friend Michael Shahan um, the other day, uh, last week we did this, and you know, the Jay Rieger company is making hand sanitizer. We Can KC is accepting all sorts of donations. Wow. I mean, there are so many people who who yeah. are um, doing this and thinking of the greater community, and then you have the people who are yeah. still kind of like, eh. It's overblown, denial. Or, or honestly, the conspiracy theorists, which, again, I'm not here to change your mind about what you think right. of this and whether it's a conspiracy or not. Um, my my take is just I'd rather be safe than sorry. And 
Absolutely. I'd rather protect Absolutely. myself than others. And others. I, I think that definitely um, weighs heavy. I, I know for me, you know, and I'm very mindful. My husband is an essential worker. So I'm always, you know, just praying for him and thankful for him. I have a sister who's a nurse. And so they're out there. And um, I have a sister-in-law who's a doctor in Europe. So, you know, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's real. It's real. So with that, with everything that is going on. So, okay. So we have this pandemic that is weighing heavy, not to mention just everyday life. Give me and give the listening audience some tools, how to manage this, how to deal with, with this in a proper way mentally, because it is heavy. And as I've always said, life will throw some things at you. And Corona, um, she's not playing with us. She's very disrespectful. Rona, we do not like Rona. Yeah, Auntie Rona is not playing, but she's <laughs> that auntie that needs to go home. You know, the auntie that comes, makes a plate and stays and makes you kiss her. And she yeah. got that mole oh, with that one hair. That's who Auntie Rona is. Yeah. But yeah. Auntie Rona got got to go. I need summer. I need summer to come. I, need, I need my life back. But until then, give yeah. us some tips. Give us, yeah. give us some strategies to help us during this time. Well, I think it's such a great, um, what you said earlier, you know, just talking about how, how little control we have over so much of this. And that is when that triggers a lot in us again, back to that trauma, not having choice, not having control. Uh, that's, I mean, it's a fact of life and it's definitely a fact of what we're going on, going through right now. I've been talking to a lot of my clients about locus of control, uh, which in the therapy world or the mental health world is essentially just saying, what can you control and what can you not control? And, you know, even listing those things out and taking a really good look at, okay, I can control where I go, who I interact with, whether I wash my hands or not, um, you know, what I do to protect myself. I can't control the decisions that other people make. Um, I can't control what happens in the financial world, you know, a lot of people are looking at the stock market and freaking out and they, you, you simply cannot. Um, and that's hard. I'm not going to lie and say that just radical acceptance of what you can and cannot control is just you're now you're fine. Right. Uh, but that is a part of the process. Um, and also just allowing yourself, you know, like I said earlier, I made so many mistakes this week trying to make this transition to telehealth. Um, if there was ever a time to have some grace and have some compassion for yourself, literally right now is that time. And we are all going through it. So taking some comfort in the fact that whatever you screw up this week, um, oh no, oh no. Okay, I can still see you on, um, on my Instagram live. Hi, Amina. Hi, Brian. Uh oh, did Latrice freeze on me now? Hi, living my Dex life. <laughs> I saw living my Dex life go commercial. That's so true. I like, I spilled tea. So many mistakes. Mm. I can. I can hear you and see you on Instagram. Living my deck slot. Yep. <laughs> I want to show you this. I wonder if you guys will be able to see this. But like, how funny is Latrice's face right now? <laughs> that is her. I am so sick of Auntie Rona. Get the F out of my life right now. She is over it. Latrice is not playing. <laughs> right, Foxy? I think also, 
because there are so many people using um, Zoom and using all these platforms right now, it's been it's been wonky. It's been hard. This is like I hate to say this, but like some of my therapy sessions, you know, we've had to start and stop and restart so many times. We still get through them, and they're always good, but it can be a process. And then it's also really interesting to see. Um, how that can be kind of a corrective experience, you know, as we're sitting here talking about making mistakes and being out of our routine and not being as, as healthy as we should be. Um, I'll be sitting in a therapy session via telehealth and things will drop and things will happen and kids will come in screaming and crying and dogs will start barking. And it's kind of funny to see just because literally it, it, there's nothing perfect about it. And I mean, not the, the therapy process is far from perfect anyway. Uh, but adding this new digital component to it, we've just had to make so, so much room for error, um, which has been fun. It says the host has joined the broadcast. What? <laughs> Thank you, Foxy. Where are her people? I know, living my dex life, keeping us accountable. Foxy. Is it working? Okay. Hey! And we're back, maybe. How are we okay. doing? <laughs> okay, we're back. We were talking about <laughs> strategies. Well, hi. hi Latrice. Latrice. Yes. Hi, hi, nice to see you again, Crystal, with all this technical difficulties. But again, we're not stressing. It is what it is. We're working through it. We're going to give the people what they need, no, these strategies. Let's move Let's go. Yeah. What what yeah. some more strategy? So locus of control. Literally figuring out what you can control and what you can't control. Now Instagram is frozen. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> can you guys still hear Latrice or no? Uh no. Yeah. Okay. I can still hear you. Your your videos just frozen. Um, yeah. So maybe it'll maybe it'll come back. Um. So besides locus of control, I've also just been encouraging people to allow themselves if you're if you're already kind of off to a rough start and you're having a week where things are not going your way and you're, you're just feeling like you're kind of failing at life, allowing it to be that. Just yeah. allowing it, you know, you will um, yeah. have another, like you said, you'll have another chance tomorrow, you'll have another chance next week. I know for me personally, my, uh, my workout plan, totally shot. Uh, that's not, that's not a thing right now. And, you know, I'm also at the end of my semester where I'm working on a lot of papers and I'm having to still wrap things up and my brain has been scrambled, which again, from a trauma perspective, looking at this from, from sure your, your rational brain, your prefrontal cortex wants to say, yes, work on your homework, work on, you know, um, your to-do list, be super productive. Your rational brain wants to do all those things, and that's what it's there for, and that's great. Foxy, off. <laughs> She's trying to eat this little cushion that I have over here. <laughs> um, but from from a trauma perspective, you know, your nervous system, your amygdala, the older parts of your brain that are there to protect you are feeling, for most of us, very much under attack, even if you're not sensing it from the forefront of noticing, yes, I feel like I'm going to get sick and die, on a very real level, there is a panic. There are other people's nervous systems that are very activated right now. Um, we're being told we can't leave the house. We can't do this. We can't do that. We can't. So again, that part of our body that is wanting to protect us, which it's yeah. supposed to be doing. That's exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, but being aware that our nervous systems are probably activated to some degree right now, even if it doesn't feel like it is at the forefront of your attention, you might be not you might not be worrying so much about your health, but there is likely some part of you that's activated and feeling a little bit confused and protective. 
and trying to force that part to stop being there is like it's like telling you you know don't breathe I yeah. mean, it's doing its job so if we know that you know there are going to be parts of us that are activated right now um and that's why our brain is a little scrambled it's almost like you know pregnancy brain you know we hear which is a totally different mechanism at, at play there um but when but it's true it's true and you're tired and, and your routine is off and so just giving yourself that permission to you know what <laughs> i guess this isn't my week to start yeah. that diet or that workout plan or that new yeah. hobby that i really wanted to do um and it's you know it's hard but but having that that way of speaking to yourself whether it's through journaling or just your internal yeah. dialogue trying to make that shift to something that still feels true too i tell my clients this a lot you know there is such a thing as toxic positivity and so much of what we see on Instagram is, you know, think positive, good vibes only. You got this. Like I'm all for cheering each other on and like, let's get right. each other tight. Sure. Um, but there is such a thing as mm -mm, now that's just toxic because that's not what my body wants to do. My body wants to protect itself right now. My yeah. body wants to cocoon a little bit. And, and sometimes this is kind of, we're in kind of a contracted state when we're trying to protect ourselves. And that is, what our body wants to do, um, but working with that, not against it, you know, trying to say, hey, body, just be positive and relax, you know? And you can't, that makes no right. sense. Like, how and often are you in an argument with your husband and he's like, Trice, just relax. <laughs> and you're like, mm -mm, that doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work, especially because I'm always right. So. <laughs> exactly. Right. Work. Right. Yeah. But I will say this, I, I totally agree because especially from someone um, who is very strong in faith and um, I pray, um, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, you know, I'm always calling on Jesus, like, listen, you see what's happening. But I think that, and this is what I share with others, you know, Yes, I have faith in God and I trust God and I trust his word and I know it's going to work out. It's going to work out. Um, but it's still hard. There's days where I'm still like, you're a little tardy, Jesus. Come on now. Let's, let's get my two out of here. <laughs> you know? And, so, and it's okay. I think that we cannot suppress our feelings. I think that we have to be very, very clear and honest with ourselves because if we aren't, that's how we stay stuck. But if we acknowledge our feelings and our emotions, because we know we can't trust our emotions because they change. But if we can acknowledge right now, oh, I don't feel good. So perhaps I need to take 10 minutes, meditate or take a nap. Mm -hmm. Get up, refresh, refuel, reset, mm -hmm. and then move forward. Because again, this is something we've never been in. This is nothing we've never seen. Yeah. So if we are trying to operate as normal, to me, that is just crazy. So you, you're trying, you can't trick yourself into exactly. it's like that, that meme. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like a dog sitting in a house and the house is on fire and there's all these flames. It's this like comic. It's this drawing dog sitting there at the table with flames and the house is ablaze. And and his little dialogue box thing says, this is fine. You know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, is so, that is my point. Exactly. We yeah. can't treat it as such, but yet we can acknowledge, okay, this is a little bit scary. We have to talk to our children, um, communicate, listen to them, hear what they're saying, and hear how they're feeling, because this whole virtual school um, is new. It's frustrating, just like we were having technical difficulties. I can't even begin to tell you what's happening, you know, with the kids. But by the same token, right now, this is our new normal. So let's make the adjustments. Let's talk about it and move forward. And I think that is the biggest thing um, with everyone to if if I could give a takeaway that that is the takeaway. Be honest with your feelings so you don't stay stuck. Guard your peace. Guard your mind in this time. You know, you have to you fight yeah. for that peace you know at all costs um yeah. because that's how you're going to get through this so 
And the, I think the biggest thing is this isn't going to last forever. Yeah. Be, know that. Be, um, have joy in knowing that this is temporary. Now, it may not be as soon as we want it because when the president said extension, I was like, sir, you didn't consult me. <laughs> You can call the Kabulia family, but I also understand why. And so, um, but it's still not going to last forever. Look, I'm working on my summer body. I need summer to come. We are not canceling yes. summer. <laughs> oh, so many people. Oh, it's so true, though. I'm hearing that a lot. People just saying, like, I am really, I don't want to not have summer. I want oh, to go to these concerts. I want to. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm hoping that, you know, we all, and, and again, though, but just reiterating that, because I know a lot of people are still going out and running around, and, and they think that they are impervious to the guidelines set by the CDC, and that they won't get sick, and that other people yeah. won't get sick, you know, the the sooner you follow those guidelines and just do it now, yeah. the sooner we can flatten the curve, and then we can all, it's like, you know, it's again another. I love these Corona memes, but it's like that. It's like that one kid that's acting up in the classroom, and because of him, we can't go out to recess. You yes. know? it's yes. like just stay just put. Just do it. <laughs> just Not, do it. <laughs> just do it. Just, just if everyone will just be responsible. Just do it. We'll get through this faster and stronger. And so, I just want to tell you, Miss Crystal. Thank you for your time. I know you still have a lot going on um, being in school and making all those different adjustments, but I appreciate your words of wisdom and encouragement and motivation to our listening audience and to the ones at on Graham. Hello. Hello. I've been trying to back and forth. I know both places. My eyes are trying to go to Facebook, Live, to Instagram, but um yeah. Um, so any last remarks? We finally got this whole technical <laughs> thing going on. What is the last takeaway that you want to share? And and then I'll do a last and we'll sure. call it a day. Well, so one uh, just quick little tool that's been helping me. Uh, and, and, you know, you everybody has their ways of coping. For some of us, it's exercise. It's, you know, reading. It's relaxing. You know, again, do whatever you're naturally inclined to do right now anyway. We don't want to force you if, if you're like, I'm going to work on this thing that I really struggle with. Maybe right now is not the time because we've got enough challenges going on. Um, but I do a visualization every morning. It's mm. it's part of my meditation practice. And um, I actually learned this at a workshop for uh, social workers. And it was all a part of self-care. So mm. I try to do a five-minute meditation every morning. Um, I just close my eyes, focus on my breath. You can do, you know, in for four, hold for four, out for four, however you can focus on your breath for that first minute. Um, and then I actually envision kind of, it's almost like a ball of light in my center. And with each exhale, the ball gets larger. And I kind of picture it as my protective bubble. Okay. Um, and, and lately, because I have been a little bit more fearful than usual, I have felt my bubble needs to be bigger. So I've been envisioning it kind of all around my home and really trying to make my home more of a sacred space and a safe place for me. Because I think right now what we need more than anything is to just feel safe. Yeah. So if you can ask yourself any day, you know, how can I feel a little bit more safe today? Maybe not safe completely. Yeah. How can I feel a little bit more safe emotionally, physically, mentally? Um, and then just then do that. And if it's this meditation or this visualization that helps you, try it out. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah. Um, you know, and only me and, and Foxy and the people I love are, are allowed inside my little bubble. So, yeah. um, so it's my way of trying to visualize just keeping me and my loved ones safe uh, because I think that's what we are hoping for, right? For most yeah. Yeah. I really like that, Crystal. I think meditation, we don't tap into it enough. And it is so powerful. And especially if you start it in the morning. I do yeah. that with my devotion, with my prayer, with the reading of scriptures and my faith confessions. Um, it's just something where it gets your mind somewhere that usually you can't get during the day because of the hustle and bustle. And even though we're not hustling and bustling as much, we still sure. got a lot. Like I told you, them humans, 
yeah. that live with me. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 here, but I I just want to piggyback as you're saying that protection piece um, and that bubble. I I look at that as the peace. So again, I reiterate yeah. that peace. Guard your peace during this time. Protect it at all costs, whatever that looks like. You know, if that's reading a you know, some faith books, if that's just praying, if that's inspirational books, whatever that looks like to you, um, get that. Um, because during this time of the unknown where fear tries to creep in, it, it you need that to kind of counteract it, to fight against it. And so guard your peace, guard your peace. Guard your peace. Yeah. yeah. And don't take life for granted. Yeah. Oh, I just want to give you a big hug and I can't. I know, I know. But, you know, I'm just, I'm seeing yeah. it everywhere. I'm seeing, you know, I know you talk about your dad. I have some family, so an uncle who is um, in the hospital right now, a cousin, just so it yeah. is, it's, yeah, it's something. And so, Let's not take life for granted. Let's be kind to each other. And more importantly, if we're kind to ourselves, we can be kind to others. I know we have, and Miss Ellen talks about be kind to others, be kind. But in order to be kind to others, you first have to be kind from within. So you got to be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it permeates outside, outwardly to yeah. everyone else. Give it from the overflow. I love Absolutely. That. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Crystal, I appreciate you. Please, you guys, if you're not following her, follow her on um, Instagram, Facebook. Um, she's doing coaching sessions. So tap into that. Email her. Mm -hmm. her. Uh, she's a wealth of knowledge, information, and array of sunshine. If you're not following me, I don't know what's wrong with you. You crystal followers, where are you? Why aren't you yeah, following you me? Because I'm going to tell you. Y'all need to follow me at Trees Kabuya because I dance too. She <laughs> this is true. You don't want to miss the Kabuya family dances. Those are good. Those are self-care in and of themselves. Or I don't know how much so watching them for you. It is. They're great. Your tick. I need to. So I think TikTok might be like my next challenge. I got okay. into a TikTok black hole, but it's just me and Foxy. So is it just gonna but be like? There's so many individual ones because okay. I because the humans that I live with are teaching me a TikTok by myself, and I've never done that. It's usually with Olivier or sure. the, uh, those humans right. that I call kids. I love that you call them these humans. Yes, they're humans, <laughs> and they. Dog. <laughs> yeah, and they are hilarious, but they're doing, they're teaching me this TikTok. And so, of course, I'm always game for it. But follow me on Facebook, Twitter, um, Graham at Trees Kabuya. I'm going to be doing this, um, you know, all week, um, just until we can get through this, just to bring some encouragement, some inspiration, some love and joy to the people as they are. Um, quarantine for the 655th day, oh. 280. Wow. <laughs> so, 20,565th day of quarantine. One million. We're over it. We don't even know how to count anymore. Our brains are. We are so over it. The first thing, once we are released, I can't I'm really tell you what I'm gonna do. I, right? Really? I'm driving to your house and I'm giving you a hug. <laughs> let's do it. Let Hi. let's call it done. Hi, Rachel. Oh my gosh, I love people from Indonesia tuning in. Well, she's she's in the States now, but I've had oh, some wow. friends from Indonesia tune into this and it's pretty cool to see just just the connection that is happening. Yeah. Even though we are we are physically not yeah. to so what I'm going to do, I'm going to close Facebook and then we're okay. going to just talk to you on um, your gram. Okay, so cool. Facebook Live people, that thank you for watching. I'll see you actually tomorrow. I'll have someone else to just bring some, some sunshine wisdom on Insights with Latrice. Bye. Bye. All right, do we close it out?